Hi, this is Bob Brown. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today is Tuesday, January 3rd, 2017. 2017. Happy New Year. And this is a continuation of a series I've been starting on Donald Trump, and I've entitled it a variety of ways. I've entitled it Trump versus the Oligarchs, Trump and Putin versus the Oligarchs. It could also be titled Trump and the Nationalists versus the Ol Oligopolies. Trump and nationalists versus the oligarchs and all of the above. So what we're entering is a very interesting time. Some, some things to keep aware of. From what it appears, Donald Trump is setting up his cabinet, his presidency, and his leadership style, much like a corporation vice a corporation would, uh, is set up. He's the president. His cabinet members are more or less senior VPs, and they're going to execute orders pretty much semi-autonomously from Trump. Trump is not going to really be on them every step of the way. They're going to have one-on-one -on -one discussions and they're going to go forth and they're going to institute the policies that that senior VP and Donald Trump and his immediate closest advisors, including his family, kind of uh, come up with. So this is going to be an interesting experiment because this may be where, you know, we've heard some people say, well, the government should be run more like a business. Well, we're going to see that in this presidency, I, I predict. And I don't know if it'll decide definitively that you can run a government like a business or not, but it's certainly going to be an experiment that we haven't seen perhaps since the days of Herbert Hoover and Calvin Coolidge. But it's going to be very interesting. So for students of business, this is a time to watch to see how this plays out. Today on January 3rd, there was a tweet from Donald Trump, and I want to talk about the tweet on two steps. One, a lot of the media don't like the fact that he is that Donald Trump keeps tweeting. They say it's unpresidential. I'm not sure what that means. But again, he's sidestepping the oligopolies of the multimedia. So Trump, which I would say he's a, he's a Plutarch, he's a very rich ruler, that, and he's very Plutarchic, if you will, and he's sidestepping the oligopolies and the oligarchs that run those businesses by tweeting. He can go directly to the masses, to his supporters, and, and to his detractors. He can talk directly without a filter. So this is very interesting how the how the media is wanting to filter what Trump says. They want to be the, the necessary, look, you tell us and then we'll tell everyone else. But Trump is going around that completely. So this is a very interesting, uh, we're seeing right now Trump versus the oligarchs, Trump versus the oligopolies, right there in his constant tweeting. He's tweeting all the time and he is bypassing that. Today a very newsworthy item in business is Donald Trump versus General Motors. Donald Trump goes on, the, goes on Twitter, he tweets, and he's criticizing GM for building the cruise vehicle. Some of them, some of them are being built in Mexico versus the United States, and he doesn't like that. So he went on, a, he went on the offensive against General Motors. Now, as you know, during the financial crisis, General Motors had to be bailed out by taxpayer monies under George W. Bush and later Barack Obama. And and uh, the Democratic Party basically, in a lot of ways, helped save the auto industry that got into deep financial crisis. Now, the way they saved that was through taxpayer do dollars and TARP, the Trouble Assets Release Program th that Hank Paulson put in place under George Bush II. So, so what you see now is, is that, and, and this is a speculation part, this is the editorial speculation section, that Donald Trump says, hey, wait a minute, we had to bail General Motors out with taxpayer monies when, they, when their financial arm, the GMAC, General Motors Acceptance Corp, got into trouble. So in Trump's mind, he's saying, hey, wait a minute, we bailed you guys out, and now you're building cars in Mexico, taking jobs away from Americans. And again, Trump is seeing himself, like I said, Trump is a, he's a Plutarch. He's a very rich person. He's a very rich person, and he, he's part of a rich, rich group of guys mostly men, not all men, but mostly men that rule through their wealth. And he's against the oligopolies and the oligarchs. Oligarchs are not necessarily rich. They're, they're richer than most of us, trust me. But they're not as rich as Trump and the billionaire friends that Trump hangs out with. These are the managers of corporations. So they, they are ruling in corporations. And they, they're relatively wealthy people compared to the rest of us, you know, hoi poi. But so you have Trump and the Plutarchs versus this other group of Plutarchs, except they're called oligarchs, and these oligarchs are not as rich as Trump, and of course they don't have the presidency and the government. So I think what you saw there with Trump's tweet against General Motors is this. General Motors' management team is still acting under what I call the Clintonian oligopoly system. 
when NAFTA was signed in place by Bill Clinton, but the Republican Congress was behind it at this time as well, and so was George Bush the first. When that was signed into law, it created a whole new form format. The workers were depowered in this country, the corporations were empowered, and now unions were pretty much decimated. No matter what side of the equation you are on unions, they were pretty much decimated because in a lot of businesses they can say, either you give us concessions or we're going to move our job, your job in Iowa, Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Pennsylvania, all the Rust Belt states, we'll move it overseas. We'll move it to Mexico or we'll move it right out of this country. And they did. And millions of jobs were lost. And that is a key component of Donald Trump's constituency that supports him. So what you see now being played out before your very eyes is this contest. It's almost like a medieval feudal war between the king and, and the vassalage around him. It's almost something out of the Magna Carta period, where King John was forced to sign the Magna Carta, except Trump's going the other way. Under Bill Clinton, when the NAFTA was signed in, oligopolies and the oligarch class in the, in the U.S. business world, in my opinion, became very powerful. Now, again, we're kind of business atheists on this channel. We're political atheists. We're trying to just look at what happened scientifically. So this oligopoly, this oligarch class, was born. And if you worked in any corporation, you've seen it. These are very powerful people, very few powerful people in a pyramidal hierarchical structure organization that rule the whole thing. If you step out of line, if you're a union worker or you're a line worker, if they know as well as I do. If you step out of line, that job's moving out of here. And that's what happened. So now we have this old model, the Clintonian oligopoly model that was formated under NAFTA that is now being challenged and under extreme pressure and duress by Trump and the nationalists. And they are pressuring people like General Motors because they have power. They can go to GM, they can go to, they went to Lockheed Martin and said 35 billion for a jet fighter is too much. And what choice did they have? They, the choice is either Trump can say, we're not buying anything from these people, which would completely damage their business, destroy their stock value overnight. So Trump has enormous power. He is an enormously powerful Plutarch. And at this point, this, we've never seen anything like this before because we have a business person who's very, he's, who's very opulent and he's fighting against this Clintonian oligopoly system that's been in place for many decades. And again, in my opinion, the oligopoly system has come, is falling apart. So that's a big pressure that's happening to these corporations. So keep your eyes out. Watch how this plays out. I'm kind of I'm going to kind of watch this what, what General Motors' response is to uh, Donald Trump and his. Tw tw they did respond because they're feeling a lot of pressure from Trump because he can go right to social media and say, "Look, you're taking American jobs away." Now we have to give both sides. There's the, both sides have to be allowed to explain themselves. We can't just say, "Oh, well, Trump's right or GM's right or they're both wrong. They're both right." But it's very interesting to see this diet. This is the first time where a president of the United States is actually tw is tweeting on social media to a major corporation and calling them out because they're violating his policies. This is, this is amazing. So this really needs to be followed. But, I, but my contention is that Trump and the nationalists are fighting against what I would call Clintonian oligopolies and the Clintonian oligarchs that have come into existence in the business class since NAFTA was signed in. Because many of the people in business, especially in the upper echelons, a lot of what they learned was basically downsize and outsource. That, that's what, I have a dog in the background here. Downsize and out, outsource. And that's all they know. they know. They don't know how to lead, they don't know how to, you know, and now we're, we're gonna see a new dynamic enter into the workplace and how you deal with workers is gonna change dramatically. How you deal with the union is going to change dramatically. This is going to have massive ramification of what Trump is doing right now for all businesses. So I would, I would keep a close eye on uh, the Twitter feed from General Motors and see what they're saying, see how they respond. Ford has already kind of basically said we're going to kind of go along with Trump. Because, again, Trump can just tell the government, and, and he's got the Republicans on his side, I don't want to buy any more from these companies. And, and even though there's probably contractual agreements that will prohibit him from totally not buying from them, he can certainly damage their business, and they know it. 
So we have a real interesting case study here, a case study that's never been seen before in maybe ever in, in American history. Uh, we have a Plutarch class running the White House, and we have the oligopolies under the Clintonian oligopolies, the oligarchs, who are now in contention. And I, I postulate that a lot of this has been played out before by none other than Vladimir Putin in Russia when he went against the oligarchs. Remember, to Putin, Putin is no fan of the Clintons, and he despises the fact, Vladimir Putin despises the fact that the Soviet Union fell. To Vladimir Putin, the greatest historical disaster that befell the world, I don't agree with this, by the way, but to Putin, to Vladimir Putin, the greatest historical disaster was the fall of the Soviet Union. And his dream, it's pretty apparent, is to rebuild the Soviet Union. So, in the early days, Vladimir Putin had to fight against the oligopolies and the oligarchs that were seizing all the private, they were seizing all the assets in the so old Soviet, in the wreckage of the old Soviet Union. After Boris Yeltsin left power, Putin seized control, and Putin's been there ever since. And Putin's going to be there for a long time. If you're going to do business in Russia, you're going to deal with the titanium-fisted uh, leader of that country called Vladimir Putin. As I say, he's, he's not, he's not iron-fisted, he's titanium-fisted. Putin rules totally. So we're seeing this played out. This was played out in this old collapse of the Soviet Union. We're now seeing it in a, a very different guise, but it's being played out again here in the United States. There was a, where, there was a structure that's, er, the NAFTA structure is eerily similar to centralized planning that the Soviet Union used and got into a lot of trouble. So 